Hey everybody, my name is Ian, and uh, welcome to another JTEC video. Today we're going to be covering uh, turbochargers. Now they're an important component for diesel engines, specifically because they help improve the volumetric efficiency of the engine, which is they help pack more combust or uh, more compressible air into each cylinder, improving the power you can or the fuel you can inject and the power you can extract from each cylinder, so you can get more power out of the same size engine. Now, uh, if these were naturally aspirated, if there is no turbocharger, supercharger, or anything like that, as you go up and down in elevation, there's more or less air, and your engine would lose or gain power or, and uh, lose fuel economy as well. So, they're a pretty standard product. And before I take this up, I wanted to go over here and show you kind of what the inside looks like. Now, this is turbo I just got off a bench. And as you can see here, we have our exhaust side and our intake side. And what, the, what this does, excuse me, let me position it correctly. As the exhaust comes out of the exhaust manifold, it spins these veins right here. And that in turn spins the other side here, which is the intake air comes in right here. This spins, compresses the air, and sends it through this pipe over to the intake manifold. When you do service these, you want to make sure, obviously, because there is a shaft on the inside on bushings, it's lubricated by engine oil. So you want to make sure that there's no excessive oil on the outside of here or any heavy coking from the engine. So I'm going to go over here and uh, go ahead and start taking this turbo off. Now this is a demonstration engine. Went ahead and loosened the nuts already. But if you come over here, as we turn these, we can see a pretty good example. Obviously some fittings are missing, but the engine oil comes into here, the oil inlet, lubricates the bushings that are on the inside here on either side, and comes down here and drains out back to the fill tube. Now that happens on every turbocharger, but this the way it goes about it is uh, different manufacturers have different solutions to that. Now once again, safety, safety for these. Um, make sure your engine is off. There's no electrical power. You disconnect the battery. That the engine and turbocharger is cool when you work on these, because like I stated earlier, these run off of the exhaust right here, which can get, I think it's about 1600 degrees. So first off, when you do service these or take these off, you disconnect the oil inlet and outlet tubes, loosen the bolts that are holding these on, and pull it straight off. Obviously, you follow manufacturer's specifications or recommendations for the testing and servicing of these. The one generic thing you always do, you look in, make sure there's no obstructions, nothing broken on the veins themselves on either side, and even the smallest bit of dirt coming in can foul up the turbine, or, uh, the turbo shaft, or the impellers and damage the whole thing. All right, so um, as I said there, a uh, small piece of dirt, anything getting in there can mess up the uh, impellers and just ruin a turbo. Now, during your inspection, one thing you want to do is you have the shaft right here on the inside, and all you do is you push it back and forth, make sure there's not a lot of end play. We'll be using a dial indicator later uh, to measure that exactly. You spin it, make sure there's no, this spins freely and uh, that it does not rub at all on the side of the housing. Now, depending on what where you do work, you would either fix these yourselves, not likely, or just put on a new unit. And uh, if you give me a second, I'll go ahead and get this set up and measure it out. All right, everybody, I'm back here and I'm gonna be uh, with our turbo and our dial indicator. I'll be going ahead and measuring the in play 
and the radial tilt. Now, if you can see there, it's a little blurry, but our Dell indicator, very fine measurements. And you want to be careful to have this on a stable surface and have the turbo secure because any little measurement can throw off the dial indicator and measure or register on there. I went ahead earlier and looked up my tolerances for the end play. And for this, it came off a of Mac AI 400. And our end play is going to have to be somewhere between 2,000 and 5,000 max. So we're sitting here and go ahead. It looks about four thousandths of an inch. Three to four thousandths of an inch. That is within tolerance. Um, give me a sec, I'll go ahead and set up again to measure our radial tilt. All right, uh, we're back and we're ready to measure our radial tilt. I know it doesn't look like it changed much, but it did. It's measuring, uh, instead of setting on the end of the shaft, it's setting on the side to measure the up and down movement. And uh, Really, that's all it is, is you're measuring that play, the bushings give it on the shaft, on the inside. So, push down, push up, do that a couple of times. Try not to spin it like I just did, otherwise that'll throw it off. All right, so I was getting about right around 10 thousandths, which is well within tolerance. Uh, Pro Demand gave me 46 thousandths of an inch max. So I know I'm at the uh, 10 thousandths there. I'm gonna, I have a 5 thousandths feeler gauge just to make sure that there's clearance in the housing itself for the fins. And that's all I do is I gently put it in make sure I can get a smooth insertion on either side, the exhaust and intake side. Now if that was off, once again, I'd probably uh, take it off, inspect it th further, but since everything is well within tolerances, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this back on. So we had, went ahead and did an inspection of our turbocharger and uh, measured our end play, made sure that there was no excessive oil inside the housing or any heavy coking on the exhaust side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on here. Now one thing is, uh, there is a gasket on there, and when I do replace it, I would go ahead and take that gasket off, put a new gasket on. You don't want any old gasket possibly allowing any gas to escape. Go ahead and slowly put these back on and I know these are a two-step torque process the first one was 20 pounds the final torque was 40 pounds but since it is in a shop environment or a training engine I apologize I would go ahead and just go ahead and do half torque and part of the servicing is when you do put the turbo back on you would thoroughly flush with clean engine oil on the turbo before starting it up because you want to make sure you don't have any lack of oil fouling up the bearings or dirty oil for that matter. So I have those put on there, it's secure. And obviously you want to make sure you have the inlet and outlet ports on the right side, up or down. get my torque wrench set up and I'll be right back. I went ahead and put my turbo back on. If this was a live engine, I'd be putting a new gasket on and uh, then I'll go ahead and torque these nuts down. Like I said, a two-step process. And the pattern would be obviously cross one side, then the other corner, up and so on. And have torque on these. Now 
Yeah, as you can tell, these are tight quarters, so you want to be careful. Readjusting once in a while as you need it. While I'm doing this, I do want to say that when you are complete, I would go ahead and like I said earlier, make sure there's uh, clean engine oil can flow in and drain out. And I'll go ahead and reconnect our tubing for our exhaust and inlet side and run it. Make sure it tested correctly. I want to say thank you for your time. Have a good day.